Three games left on Year of the Mecca. And we're back yeah. to a 2D game. Oh, we sure are. We're playing Hardcore Mecca today, or at least. Uh, yep. Arclight's playing it. Yep, that's right. Yeah, Nephilim's back as well. Glad to, uh, glad to have you here after so long since... Uh, uh, since another Century's Episode 3, the final... <laughs> Yeah, which I went on vacation since then, then I came back, and I got really sick, and it sucked. Ooh. Anyways, I'm here now. Yep. Oh, yeah, this game. Like, hey. hmm? So, okay, I was just trying to, like, find my words as far as to, like, describe this. Because I guess this kind of goes back into what I was thinking about with this whole series 
of like playing mecha games like before i landed on the idea of of like streaming a mecha game each week and like before i was thinking like oh i would do like a month of mecha and this wasn't really into consideration because at the time i didn't really give consideration to the idea of playing 2d mecha games kind of for the same reasons as you know like like turn-based tactics or strategy rpg mecha games or something like that because like my my jam is more the like real-time 3d action stuff where it's like you are get are able to make use of all of that space to move around and freely but hmm. uh when i had to expand this to 52 games it's like okay i might as well i'll see what this one is, oh has to offer as well as you know like check it out the assault suit series which you know First game that we showed on on stream at the start of the year, yeah. Assault Suits Valken, and this game is you can effectively see it as the ultimate successor to the Assault Suit series, which means it is damn fucking awesome. Yeah, I remember seeing this game, but I have not heard much talk about it. But it looked cool. Yeah, it's uh. 2D sprite work with, like, the sprites and proportions being, like, very Super Robot Wars-esque. You know, it's, it's like if someone took uh, took a look at how the the animation se uh, sequences for attacks in Super Robot Wars played out and tried to make, like, an entire game built on that, on that style. That sounds pretty sick to me, actually. Yeah. Yeah, in fact, we'll even so get into the, uh... Oh, yeah, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, we'll just get into like some of like the missions to to start as well. Kind of like you know, you know, like all good things, just start from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And what better place to start than fighting the monster of the week? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know this had voice acting in it too. Yeah, there's a uh, there's multiple language for voice acting in this. I got it set to Japanese naturally. But, but right. I know there's also, like, uh, Chinese uh, voice acting because uh, this game uh, is an indie game developed uh, by a team of Chinese developers called Rocket Punch Games. Huh. Aptly titled. Like, like the name, uh, the animation style, like, as I just described as well. And, mm -hmm. like, the fact that we are playing out an episode of a super robot anime. Everything from minute zero. Oh, like, oh, no, even before that. When you got to like the main menu, or like the, or with the uh, uh, the pre-stream, I had it playing like the game's main theme, Dash and Strike, sung by the Prince of Anisong himself, Hironobu Kageyama. Like, oh shit. Minute Zero lets you know that these people understand it. Like they get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah they know what they're making. Yeah, they, they know what they're making so much, and th that's the only disappointing thing about this segment is that I wish that like there was like more than just this segment we're gonna play, of just two D super, super robot action. Oh wait, is this the only super robot part? Yeah, it's uh, it's it's one of those uh, I mean, I guess I kind of like surprising it, but like it's a bit of a fake out. I mean, I mean, like you saw like the all the different robots and characters on the uh. Oh, like the main, yeah. uh, on the title screen, like this one was clearly not there. Oh, look at this, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's some good shit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they 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 love they love they love them some Masami Obari. I can tell. Oh, I see what. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, yeah. that's a oh, holy shit! Hey, this is the real world, fuckers. <laughs> we ain't got no super robots here. This is it's a real war robot war. The some war shit, some atrocities happening. I smell war crimes. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> oh we got way too excited when it came to like uh, this at uh, this moment that is supposed to be so dark and horrific. <laughs> our, <laughs> our brains are ruined from decades yeah. of mecha anime. <laughs> yeah, and I wouldn't I, have it any I, other way. Nothing gets me more hyped than war crimes. 
Nothing gets me more hype than protagonists that are just, like, so hot-blooded, I'm gonna get testosterone poisoning by proximity. Yeah. <laughs> That's also good. I like I like these the way the, the cutscenes are playing out, too. Yeah. I get they're they're really well done. Uh like uh, given like the scope of the game and budget they had to, had to going for them, even knowing that like this is also by the way, this was also a Kickstarter game. So you can put uh. that so you can put that on the list of Kickstarter games that actually delivered. Hmm. <laughs> well, that's always good. Uh, good to yeah. see. Yeah. Yeah, it's just yeah. Real robos with the giant robo villain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the yeah the villain of this game, like you look at him, he is, he is like quite the ham. <laughs> so here is our protagonist, Tarthur, very uh, very stoic looking fellow. Edgar is his partner, is way more chipper. Mm -hmm. yep. Nancy is and... our our boss. We're part of a mercenary company. So naturally, she's uh, she's a bit of a greedy one as well because she just needs the money. You know, squad leader there, Morris. Hey. And, yep. And that's who we need to find. Basically need to find her because, like, she's got, like, important intel regarding, like, this uh, current war and, like, how to stop it. Mm. Yeah, it's like, it's, uh, like, like, you look at all, like, the character types and obviously what, like, the... What, uh, what's going to happen with the plot. You know, not, nothing original about it. Th this is one of those classic cases of everyone loves, like, the uh, involved in this, like, loves the, the tropes of the genre and just wears it on yeah. its sleeve. It doesn't, it doesn't need to do it in any, like, particularly creative way as long as it has, like, the, like the gusto to just give it, like, 100%. Yeah, I feel like sometimes it's fine if you just want to have yeah. the tropes and just write what you love, you know? You don't need to change things up all the time. Yeah, like, like, so, like, like, it is more than fine to, to go with an homage when, uh, like, if you, like, have, like, a deep understanding of, like, kind of, like, what goes on, like, in making those pieces of fiction work. Yeah. I, I prefer, like, this more sincere route than, like, a, a half-assed parody or something like that. Like, yes, exactly. Yeah, like, and that's the sort of thing where it's, like, at least... At, le at least when it comes to, like, Japanese works, if you're getting something that's parody, like, it, I feel more often than you get, like, in, like, of, uh, like, parodies from, like, other parts of the world, West like, yeah... That they're they they still have that sincerity to it. Yeah, which but, like they helps wouldn't be lot. making fun of it if they didn't already love the goofy parts about it already. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean that's what makes Megas XLR work, and that's not even a Japanese robot. No, but that's it. Still rules. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's it's still it, it was still awesome enough for someone to call into like I think it was like a good smile. Like it, that's like the company that like does like those figures, right? Who called yeah, in yeah, basically yeah. requesting, uh, like, hey, could you guys make a robot figure based on Megas XLR? It's this Western uh, <laughs> robot, and uh, oh god, how do I put it? Like it had like this, like the caller uh, like requested, like had like this uh, adorably awkward energy to it because it is just like, uh, uh, how do I, how do I say this so it makes sense to them? <laughs> Amazing. But it, you know, it's like it's a boxy retro looking robot, but the head is a car. <laughs> and, and I'm like, yep, you're not wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's not wrong. Oh, uh, yeah, we even got, like, lo mech launches. Oh, yeah, here's the actual game now. Yep. Yeah, so here we go. Uh, explanation of the controls. Obviously, I'm moving with uh, the left stick. Even though this is 2D, you don't control with the D-pad. And frankly, you, like, kind of uh -huh. don't need it. Because, like, this is what the, uh... The, just because, like, it, it's... Uh, as you'll find, it encourages a lot more, like, fine aim in order to uh, to do well. Uh, no right stick control. Although there was, uh... In, like, one of, like, the post-release patches, I guess because people, like, were... Uh, we're being like, uh, uh, I, I guess we'll just say scrubs, uh, mm -hmm. whiny bitches, whatever you want to call it, 
complaining about why isn't this a twin stick shooter? Considering mm -hmm. you can move and shoot, not realizing that there are such things as limited control schemes actually being viable to like, uh, like giving texture to like a game's control method. But yes, there is a mode if you wanted to, you could make it so that the right stick controls where you aim and move like separately. But that's clearly not what this game was designed for. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Because this you is what. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, because uh, because on top of like all like the uh, the weapons you have, which I have uh, assigned all to like the uh, to the face buttons, but like on the uh, on the triggers, like you have all kinds of uh, uh, functions for. Uh... There we go. That was a bit overkill, just like jabbing my shield into that one dude, but it's whatever. <laughs> But yeah, it's like I got a shotgun. That's like my current equip weapon. I can press up on the D-pad and switch to like a heavy weapon that does not recharge ammo. It's basically like a backup mm. if you need to deal like heavy damage. And it's mm -hmm. like a flamethrower in this case. Mm -hmm. uh, you got chest Vulcans. Much mm -hmm, like any course. Vulcans in Gundam games, they are the last weapon you ever want to use. Of course. And then Y and B, as you see, are like the uh, my special melee moves. You use them once and they go into a cooldown. And there's also that uh, Y plus B ultimate skill, which is like a mm -hmm. story mode exclusive thing, and you only fill that up once you uh, kill enough enemies. But more than that, right. it, that's important, is your boost meter and how you use it. Because mm. uh, with left bumper, I can uh, boost at full speed in any direction. And there's a good mm. sense of like momentum and weight to it. Like I try turning around in the hard opposite direction, it doesn't immediately go there. Uh, fast falls to the ground really fast because this is a heavy piece of machinery. Mm -hmm. uh, but with right bumper, I could jump and then while holding it, be able to hover around very slowly in the air. So this is for like much more precise air movement. And mm -hmm. then right trigger uh, when on the ground, it holds you in place so you can aim more freely. Or if you're in the air, it'll hold you in place and you can still aim around freely. Mm. And then of course, left trigger is for your shield. Yeah. Yeah, obviously the Vulcans are best used on the on the on the grunts, as you would expect. <laughs> uh it's fine. They're all like war crime people, so I it's I, good. I I mean this, I mean this is just what's coming to them. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I love yeah. it. I'll anti infantry. I love it when you just have like the goose try to shoot a giant mech. Yeah. It's, it's, it's it, it never goes like... well. Like, you're trying oh. to shoot it, and you're not using a bazooka. What is wrong with you? What are you trying to accomplish here? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's real, like, real like, silly. Also, like, as you could, like, imagine with the, uh... With, uh... uh with, like, the manual aiming and, and needing extra indicator to know, like, where your shots are gonna go, you've noticed that there's, like, those two red arrows, like, that mm -hmm. are, like, kind of facing right in front, like... The big yeah. arrow is, that's for, like, your main weapon, which I have assigned to X. And mm -hmm. the smaller diamond one that moves at, like, a different uh, rate every time, uh, that correlates mm -hmm. with, like, the, the chest Vulcans. So, mm. good attention to detail in making sure that, like, weapons that are, like, attached via hard points and not handheld, like, are treated mm. differently in terms of aiming from each I, other. Yeah, that's, that is some... That's a really nice detail. Thanks. Yeah. Again, these guys just get it. They get, yeah. That's just an AT field. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, who, knew my, who knew my shield was able to do that? <laughs> so, okay. Oh, yeah, that's right. I gotta... Yeah. Gotta take care of the... Uh, the APCs and soldiers up front because, like, that way, like, this dude can move forward. Mm hmm. Die. And just, and just shoot the grunts. They were probably I mean, going to kill someone else when they ran away. It was, it was it's for uh, their own good. <laughs> it was probably for the best. Nobody cares. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of course, we can't just keep shooting APCs and, like, foot soldiers forever. No. Nope. Now we gotta we gotta fight actual mechs now. Yep. Yeah. Again, they're still giving just... us uh, 
uh, these important uh, tips. And yeah, that, that flamethrower is really good. As you might imagine, obviously, with having played this game, that, like, I'm not going in it with a, uh, uh, with, like, a whole lot of, uh, Oh, wait, yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, that's right. You could also pick up, like, a, an extra weapon that, like, also doesn't refill ammo and has less. But, like, hey, you get to swap between three uh, weapons in your hand. How, co how cool is that? Hmm. Yeah, it's still cool. Yeah. Nothing but, wrong with having more weapons. Okay. Yeah. But, but, yeah, but, yeah, as I was saying before, this is obviously not, like, a fresh new game. This is, like, my, uh, like my unit already upgraded. I've kind of invested in all the different, like, upgrade trees and whatnot, unlocked the different weapons. And, like, and all these missions as well, like, as you go through them, you'll find that there are, like, sub-objectives that you can do that, mm -hmm. uh, like, it's another thing to shoot for in addition to ranking, because obviously all these uh, missions have ranking as well. I have not gotten S rank on all of them. Some of, uh, some of them are, like, quite a bit difficult to, to get, uh, get that rank near the end. Mm -hmm. so, so what do you have to do to get, like, an S rank? Uh, Something. Primarily, uh, it's, uh, well, I would say it's avoid taking damage, but the thing that extends from that, I would say, is uh, don't use the healing stations. Because uh -huh. uh, every point of health that you recover with those stations essentially kind of boosts you down like a, uh, like, a, uh, well, like your great threshold, essentially. Hmm. Yeah, that that's the idea. And like for right. and I've been, I've been able to like manage that for like a good number of like the missions at the start, but it's uh yeah, but it's otherwise like pretty difficult. Uh, like mm -hmm. during the later ones where you're just getting hit from like all over the place. Also, that thing mm -hmm. like if I had shot that first instead of you did uh, in front of me, uh, it would have fallen and crushed him. Uh -huh. So yeah, uh, environment interactions. That's also in this. That uh, that's really neat. Yeah, and there you go. Second objective oh. complete. Is that hidden... like a secret up there? Yes, there are. Yeah, this uh, like it's uh, like like this is uh, like that is like ve uh, very appreciated to the point where I almost kind of consider it a miracle since it's like an indie mecha game, and I would think that they would end up like in the same pitfalls that like m most like I'd say bigger budget mecha games from the past have kind of fallen into, where they don't really <laughs> put much stock into like the level and mission design beyond just right. elimination. Yeah. But, but here it's but, like, okay, we got things where there's some environment interactions, there are sub-objectives, mm -hmm. there are hidden locations that if you, like, brush up against the wall, you'll find that there's, like, a hidden cavern or something like that. Right. It, like, they add more to it than... Like, they just add more to the game. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's a, it's a very, uh, like, a, a appreciated, uh, like, feature. It's the sort of thing where, like, I just think about this, and especially how it's been... God, yeah, it's been four years since this game originally came out. And they've done, like, oh. updates for it, like, over the couple years after. But it's like, man, where the hell are these guys now? I need them to make another game, either 2D or 3D. I, I think... I think... Um, I don't know if it's these guys, but I saw someone's making, like, a... A fighting game in the style. Huh. That's the first Let's I've heard of. Right? What's that? But yeah, it's, it's the sort of thing where like I've checked the, like the uh, like the Rocket Punch Games website and like ours have, there's not been updates on it uh, or any news mm. about that they're working on another game since then. I mean, considering the name uh, that they went with, I would not be surprised if it was the sort of thing where they only did it because, like, they just wanted to, like, make this their dream game and got lucky with Kickstarter and had to obviously make, like, a company name for it to be legit. Yeah, it might have been something like that. Oh, Ooh, yeah. Oh, let's go. This is probably, like, one of my favorite aspects of this, and that, uh, of this game, and that is the rival who is, like... Like we made the joke from like the from the prologue mission how it's like this is not a super robot anime. This is the yeah. real world. But this motherfucker's uh -huh. fighting like he is in a super robot anime. <laughs> Look at oh, this dude. Oh my god, and he's a red a red robot, and you're a blue yes. robot. Oh yeah. Yo, this this track though, this music. Yeah. 
And like he's using a standard issue like grunt. Like he's not even using like the crazy ass custom uh unit that he gets later on. Yeah. Oh, but he's still he's still going oh, toe yeah. to toe with you. It's not the robots that decide whether something's real or giant robo. Yeah. It's whether true. it's real or super, it all comes down to the person. Yeah. It's so right, Sumi. This is like this, this is the sort of thing with the animation style where it's like like this is like the the more advanced version of what you would always see like on like games from the Genesis or something like that where it's like it's large uh, characters where it's not a single sprite it's limbs made of uh, that are like all individual sprites like moving mm -hmm. and being twined uh together yeah and, and this is a thing where it's like this is clearly like such a more advanced version of that because it's obviously not just oh we made oh we just made like a, a boss that is all made of spheres like like they're yeah. actually having to they had to, like like the art uh, people on this game just had to have like taken the time had to take a lot of time figuring out okay what angles should we be drawing uh, like all these different limbs to to match up with like how we want to animate them from this limited 2D perspective mm -hmm. oh hey Aaron glad you, uh, glad you could drop by <laughs> hello oh um, briefly, I was like looking up what that fighting game I was, I was thinking of. It's called Iron Saga Versus, and it's like this. It's like this uh, fighting game styled like a super robot game. It's and it has Maz Mazinger and Don Kuga in it with a bunch of original robots. I need to look it's, this up. I'll, I'll link it to you actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, de definitely just drop it to me, like, in the Discord. I'll, I'll be able to check it out once this is all done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's surprising. Like, I was thinking, because it was, like, Iron Saga. I was wondering what, uh, if that had to be, like... Because that almost sounded like something that would be, like, a semi-official thing. But you mentioning yeah. that, yeah, it's got Mazagar and Dan Kuga. And I'm like, say no more. <laughs> yeah, Iron Saga's apparently, like, a... An, like, an iOS gotcha game thing. That had M Mazinger in it? I don't know. Okay, you said gotcha. I'm out. No, the the fighting game is not a gotcha. The original thing, like the th this, is like a spin-off or whatever. Okay, good. We're back fighting in fighting games. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's like that bit of like open the gate. Wait, no, it's a gotcha. Close the gate. Close but the this gate. is a fighting game spin-off. Open it a little. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go to like one of the later ones because I'm trying to think. Forget if it's four one or four two that has it because like this game like has all kinds of different bosses to it. Obviously, we fought uh, from the first uh, one, Shadowy Wasteland, the one that had like the uh, just the the hot blooded asshole who t had a red colored mech and was fighting us hand to hand. But there's mm -hmm. uh, ones where uh, like one of these two. I believe has a boss uh, that is it's a group of three that's like a Doranjo type of setup and they all have their huh. own units and they're a triple combiner. Oh, that's sick. Yeah. The problem is I can't remember if it's in Raid or Siege of Orcus. That's the problem. I, mm, I, mean, I guess, I guess we're going to have to play both. Let's play, find out. Yeah. Any area and apparently this game is going to be on Steam. That that's good, yeah, yeah, and I, and I and I'm hoping with like what the uh, because obviously I'll have to look up the details of it like once the stream is done because if I run anything else on this computer besides OBS and Discord things are going to get scuffed, but oh, uh, I'll I'll definitely I'll definitely look it up and oh and hopefully I'll be surprised by like what they're showing with mechanics and be like yeah it's a fighting game but hopefully like the mecha part of it shines through the most in mechanics, you know, like, uh, yeah. like how Tecromancer did. Yeah. The thrill of when a robot transforms. Edgar is, is a very cultured person. He gets it. He knows. Yeah. That's too real style. Like, like seriously, like, oh my God. Like this is the sort of uh. thing where like, 
Like, th like there are conversations about Mecha that come up that I could just smell from a mile away how bullshit they are. And, like, mm -hmm. the ones that don't come up as bullshit is if, like, someone understands immediately that there is a distinction between super type and real type. Like, yeah. if, that, if that's what they decide to lead their conversation in with, then, like, that's how you know you're in good hands. Yeah, that, that's but how but you if know, you've babe. got some asshole like trying to put up like a fucking mecha alignment chart, or like or or positing if Evangelion is just a show that happens to have mecha uh, dump their ass immediately. Uh huh. And and Aaron, yes, I remember the old Power Rangers fighting game. I also oh. remember Ivan Ooze was super broken in that game. Oh oh oh! Talk about Battle for the Grid, the the, the Marvel like yeah. game. Yeah. Oh. Chaotic evil mecha soon. <laughs> oh, God. That, that even reminded me again, just like the other part of like those like shitty discussions that also upset me is how people try to convince yeah. me to watch Attack on Titan because they say it's a mecha anime. <laughs> and it's and it's like motherfucker i've i already know the deal with those people transforming into titans those that the, they're more like naked body horror ultraman like who are yeah. you trying to fool it's more ultraman than like mecha but yeah sure. also you fuckers don't even watch super robot shows what the hell would you know are you talking who about? the hell do you think i am <laughs> Get back to me after you watched um this Tokusatsu. Yes, Subi, it's more Tokusatsu. Yes, that is so true. Like, Get yeah. Back to me. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, go ahead. Uh, no, I, I was just thinking because I dropped that uh, that little quote from uh, from Kamina and Gurren Lagann that also reminded me about how this game actually for a brief while had like a DLC like uh, crossover promotion where you could play as like uh, uh, where you had playable units from Gurren Lagann. Uh, unfortunately, it was before. Oh. Like, unfortunately, oh. like by the time I got to the game, it was after that whole limited time DLC thing came, and so I missed my chance on it. Damn, that's right. I remember this game had like Gurren Lagann DLC in it. Holy yeah. shit! Which is like, like you know, there, there's so many other like Super Robot shows I would sooner go to bat for than Gurren Lagann. But you know what? It's still the best Gainax an uh, mecha anime, so I'll allow mm. it. <laughs> Like that that final quarter of the show though definitely kind of like er, uh, like kind of like earns itself by that point mm -hmm. after all the ups and downs. Oh, oh right, and like I forgot like the Gurren Lagann DLC had you just you could just hop out and just as Simon and just drill shit yeah. as a person. <laughs> Yeah, it's so frustrating that it's like even through like the uh, the power of like trying to find say like uh yeah you know like torrents or of or, or, or like uh, or like other places to quote legally acquire uh like content that is currently delisted I've still never been able to like find a download for that stuff anywhere. I and Sumi, I love me get some Gunbuster. Gunbuster's like up there for me though. Gun Lagan like just inches it out for yeah. me anyways. It's just that, like, pretty much all of, like, Gai uh, those Gainax mecha series, uh, like, with the exception of Ava, just kind of, I feel they always fall into the same problem, which is, I mean, it's not too dissimilar from what we were already describing with, uh, with this game here, where, like, mm -hmm. it's, uh, where, like, it's not exactly, like, shooting for anything super, like, or original or, like, a neat spin on existing, like, concepts or tropes. It's just being, like, really like proud and like sincere about like what it uh, wants to be like gunbuster mm -hmm. die buster Gurren log on they're all like classic super robot core but the problem i've always mm -hmm. had with them is that they were always like they, they were only like really good when it came to the uh to recreating the high moments you know like the super mm -hmm. impactful stuff that like you always remember that got you excited when you watched like a mazinger or get a robo or things like that and when it came to like the more like trying to do the more human moments that are like kind of downtime, I found it was always like really hit or miss. Mm -hmm. Because I don't yeah, think we really need to like, uh, well, like say any more about what I think about the Kamina city arc. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Also, yes, yeah, Sumi, it was definitely like Unbuster did start as a sports anime parody. I mean, it was also. 
Ah, uh, well, it's a title that is just like aim for the top. Aim for the top, which was also the name of a like a a, a sports anime, which I'm yeah kind of blanking on. Yeah. Yeah, tennis, tennis. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but also even in the case of Gunbuster, I think the main thing for me as well, like even if it is celebratory of it, is that like. It also runs into the OVA problem of it's like they they only have so many episodes to do cool shit and like so few of them ever like make like like any stories in them that feel as rich as like the kind of stuff that was airing on TV at the time. Mm -hmm. You know, like you only had six episodes to work with. Like, like good, good like trying to cram like a season's worth of character arcs and like motivations and development in there. Yeah. But then, but then again, sometimes it's all right because then you get yeah. like three episode stuff like uh, Majin Kaiser Skull, and that show mm -hmm. gives no fucks about trying to be deep whatsoever. That, that show does not care. It only cares about cool shit. It about, only cares like, about the... violence and equilibrium. Yeah. yeah. That show knows what it's trying to be. Yeah. <laughs> Was an Ultraman or something like that in Godzilla once, or is that? A... I don't know, actually. Would not be surprised if there was like a crossover. But but generally, like Ultraman is typically like its own own series. You know, same. Uh, I mean, some like I imagine there would be had to be crossover something at at some point because obviously you then get things like uh, Amon Rider and Super Sentai occasionally having like the big crossover movie event. Mm-hmm. So wait, are you defending anything in this mission currently, or is it just kill everything? Uh, just kill everything until you can uh, proceed through the level. Right, yeah, yeah. It, it, these, th yeah, these grunts are giving you a lot more uh, trouble from the looks of it. Yeah, like I think this was definitely like around the point where like, when I was replaying the game, I decided, okay, maybe I don't need to S rank every single level. Like, I already yeah. got all the weapons and, like, upgrades. Uh, I got Tarther at his max level, which is 20. Like, there's not much more I need. Um, Aaron, I think, I think, uh, Godzilla, if, I don't remember Godzilla, like, crossovering in a Super Robot Wars game, but it was probably in the Gotcha game. Godzilla was probably in the Gotcha SRW game. Yeah, freaking, uh, Cross Omega or whatever it's called. Or, or, yeah. w, or D, something like that. It, it feels it feels weird with, like, Super Robot Wars. Just kind of realize that some of, like, the more bizarre of, uh, like... Like, that, like they're... I, I get that they're obviously, like... The, the, the MO lately has been to, like, try and lean into, like, some of, like, the more... Uh, like, weirder, like, uh, scenarios. Like, the like the gotcha having things like Asuka piloting Shingeta Robo 1. Yeah. Uh, or but, I think even a, a crossover event that was before it, which I was surprised that, like, I didn't know about, and it kind of made me upset uh, that, again, people only seem to recognize these events happening when it involved, e it involved Evangelion, because there was a similar uh, event in that uh, mobile game where it was, like, you know, a pilot from a different series piloting a different robot, and I guess the first one they went with was, let's have Amuro Ray pilot Mazinger Z. Uh, and I'm like, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, I get that. I, was, I remember like that gotcha game, or what? Yeah. The Double D also had like Getter Noir, which I never heard of until then. Oh yeah, that's like. Oh, oh yeah, this game. Oh shit, yeah. Dicey. I should be getting to the. Uh... Oh yeah, oh, but that's alright because I do have like a repair device. Yeah. You're not yeah, like that much yeah, you got all these different items as well that like I forgot to really like make use of because I was busy just like running and gunning while also talking yeah. about how kick ass giant robots are. <laughs> yeah, I get, it's yeah. understandable. But yeah, but the thing with I guess that's still kind of like uh, frustrating for me with like Super Robot Wars is that you know as cool as it is that we're now at a point where the, the like the non OG games are finally getting like official English translations and releases is like mm -hmm. why. Why can't we get a game that just has, like, a lineup that is on the same level as the Alpha or Z series? 
because those are the ones yep. that I still care the most about, like, wanting to play through. And those are the ones where, like, people have still not been able to, like, get the, get through with, like, uh, translating, even, in, like, in a fan yeah. capacity. Yeah, like, Z was... Uh, Z, I felt like, was, like, the best Super Robot Wars has ever been. Yeah, it's like... Z2, both of those entries on PSP were actually the thing that I first noticed when it came to Super Robot Wars. Yeah. And it was like the big motivator for getting me to like to go down this path of being like a mecha connoisseur like I am. And that's because nice. it's like, well, I can't read these uh can't I, I can't read these games because they're like in a different language. But I could definitely like find like uh the shows that are represented here and watch them and see how they're going, and that's how I ended up yeah. Like going down the Votoms rabbit hole and realizing just <laughs> how much more of Macross there was beyond uh, SDF, and, yeah. and discovering the glory that was Shin Mazinger Shogeki Z. <laughs> it's like mm -hmm. the best super robot anime. It's incredible. You should everybody should go watch that and then just feel the pain we felt after finishing it. Yeah, and then and then read Shin Mazinger Zero. Yeah, that do that. That that might as well oh. actually be like. Like, in lieu of an actual Shin Great Mazinger, like, just reading the manga might be, like, the better, like, follow-up to that anime. <laughs> because it I'll starts... Take. Cause, okay. Because okay. it really does go in some, like, even more extreme directions than the show did. Damn. You know what? I'll take it. I'll take anything. Yeah. Um. Also, since we're talking about SRW, I think it was Z1 did mm -hmm. one thing with animations that no other game did where it had how do i describe this was it, it the uh okay. i i do it i think i might know what you're talking about was it the uh like uh the extra animations for like attacks transitioning based on like what terrain you were in yes like if yes, someone was yes. airborne or on the ground yeah it was the first and only time they ever did that because that they realized this shit is too hard. It's a it, it is so much work. You know, yeah, it's really crazy. Mm. But you did get like the big O if you're up against like a flying enemy, you just like use the hook yeah. to bring them into its punch. Yeah, yeah, that that shit is so good. <laughs> Yeah, just a little, uh, just a little uh, reprieve during that section to kind of show the civilians evacuating. You mm -hmm. know, stuff, stuff for that. Hey, you know, just because there are grunt soldiers at the beginning that we could, uh, that uh, the game that we were shooting, you know, like doesn't mean that was the end of it. There's obviously people that we gotta save. Right. Yep. There's still some more, some more stuff happening. But we got, we gotta get that uh, trope checklist for the genre ticked off. So does uh, cross off more items. Yeah. Yeah, and I and I think coming up is actually like uh, like uh, unlike what the the first thing was. I think uh, like this mission might have like a, what it would be like a actual for real defense uh objective where you gotta protect oh. like some uh, convoys that are trying to uh to like evacuate the the civilians. Is, is it's not it too a, bad because okay, uh, okay i mean i mean just because look at like look at how mobile i am with like all of like yeah. this uh this boost power i got yeah which is like like it really does highlight something that like i always think is is a really good pro tip i think for anyone that wants to make like a good uh boost system uh for a mm -hmm. mecha game and that is uh don't make your quick dodge be, like, a separate input from your regular boost button. Just combine the two and have, like, the initial acceleration have, like, a high burst of speed before it, like, slightly levels out to, like, what your boosted top speed would be. Because uh, because then, like, you know, you, you have, like, uh, you don't have to, like, keep track of, like, completely separate buttons in order to uh, know whether or not to just move fast or to dodge. Yeah. And then, of course, there's also, like, goofy shit you can, uh, you can do with it, uh, where you just, like, uh, mash the button like this. Mm -hmm. Yo, that's really goofy looking. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
<laughs> oh, whoops. I love it. Yeah. Oh, what happened? Uh, just all but one of them are dead. I forgot that you had to actually shoot down the missiles, but I... But again, like, when I said that, like, this defense um, aspect isn't too bad, it's more like it's not the primary objective. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. That's prob it, probably... Okay. Yeah, because, like, it would be annoying otherwise if, if it was, like, just stopping you in your tracks like this. Yeah. Well, at least the uh, one is still alive. Yeah. Again, Vulcans like this are... Oh, you probably need to use your repair kits. Yeah. I also got to use my shield more. Which is something I generally forget to, to do a lot, but that's just because of the uh, the other mode of this game. Like, that lets you play as a bunch of other units, and the ones I use don't huh. even come with a shield. So that's why huh. I don't even think about it. Oh, you can just make cover? Yeah. Yeah, you got uh, collapsible cover, uh, smart missiles, turrets. Again, it's like, I keep forgetting to use these because it's like, again, like in the, uh, in the side mode of this game, you don't, you don't get any items beyond the, uh, the repair kits. So, oh. it's genuinely been a while since I have played the, the actual campaign for any reason. Hmm. In fact, let's just do this, show off, like, our ultimate skill. Yeah. Oh, is that like a shoulder blade? Yeah. Yep. That kind of a cool. waste on just two, but, uh... But I could just keep doing this. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Also known as a window shutter, Sumi. God damn it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Those enemies hurt. They do, yeah. How much more? Okay, we got a we got a repair station. That's mm -hmm. good. Yeah, I just want to get to the end of this and like, and hopefully like, confirm whether or not. Uh... Hands off them! <laughs> <laughs> oh, the confirm like if the boss is in the slow or not. Mm. Yeah, but, but again, I just I just knew from like memory that this was like the. Uh... Like, 4-1 or 4-2 is the one that has, like, the boss I wanted to show because, like, you need to see the combiner in action. I need to see it. I need to know. You gotta get that Gatai in your system. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Again, our brains are ruined. Oh, uh, we call that the yeah, 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 strat. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, let's just, uh, I, mean, I mean, what do we even need to do here? Let's just get, uh, let's just get Yipes on, on call and have him commentate this whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, where's the Yipes, the V2? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, I just think it's like, like how how is it still, or or maybe it happened at this point. I I forget. I haven't what? paid attention to this particular aspect of Street Fighter Six. But how is there still yeah. not been like a IFC, like Yipes commentary, uh, commentator I, mode for I that game? I don't know. I feel like I feel like that's a missed opportunity. I think you need a Yipes like DLC or something at this point. Yeah, for it. like at some point, because I think people already realize, okay, in terms of like meaningful information these commentators can give, it's like, it's already so limited yeah. that it'll get tiring having to hear the same thing over and over, that if you'd rather hear something more often than not, why not just listen to Yipes go on like just spouting his usual nonsense? Yeah. Like, I would buy a Yipes DLC if they just said, <laughs> "I I would buy a Yipes DLC for any game." Yeah. Mm. Okay, you know I think at this point, uh, oh, yeah, this, that, this. that's the boss. So this wasn't the one I was oh. uh, wanting to show. So oh. I guess we're showing the one immediately after. <laughs> if, if oh we can well. Get to yeah. Oh, it's like, oh no, what a shame! I have to show <laughs> more of this game. <laughs> He yikes steals. No, yeah, we're talking about yipes. 
Yeah. The Yikes yeah. DLC. F the FGC commentator. The Yikes DLC is like, that's all the it, DLC it, that, prices now. The, I was about price. to say the Yikes DLC is that it's just good. It's just good text on commentary. Oh yeah, that is big Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna tell you about all his anti-vax opinions. Oh. Oh. Uh, uh, sorry oh. about that. <laughs> God, in another timeline. Where this, uh, where this in-game commentator feature was more of a thing, we would have actually had like our Gutex and Micros Excellent Adventures commentary pack. Yeah. Oh, we absolutely would have if it was still a thing. Yeah. It's, it, but I, now it's like Micros and uh, who's the other guy? Jan. I just know I, that they were okay. like playing uh, Street Fighter Six in one of the betas, and I saw them playing that, and it felt like. It felt like an episode of Excellent Adventures again, but just, you know, with Gutex replaced by someone presumably better. Yeah. Like, it it, it was the same routine of just like, yo, know, like, obviously, Mike Cross, he knows he can talk to, uh, the, to talk the theory about it all, but he's always just going to uh, just get clowned on uh, by, like, whatever he's playing against. Yeah, and, it's great. And that's where it's fun. I'm glad at least Mike Cross is having... A better time. At least he's doing better now. He is, uh, for sure. Like, like, the dude, a dude was not feeling what he was doing at that point and needed to step away from it. Totally understandable thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. And there's there's a little girl that the uh, that one of the main characters uh, befriends. You gotta have mm -hmm. that. You know something terrible's gonna happen. Oh yeah. This is a real robot. You think? Good things happen to people. I mean, so, I mean, sometimes they do. I mean, look sometimes at Macross. Good yeah. things happen with the power of music. It, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Not. Now that we show is uh, Gundam or other real robot shows. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, Edgar's just basically going on about how like he's uh he's opting to kind of like stay behind to help with evacuations because he obviously sympathizes more with like kind of like what the the citizens are going through. Even mm -hmm. even though obviously like both of their objectives are like they need to go and find the lieutenant. Yeah. But but uh, but obviously like since we're not playing as Edgar, it's like whatever he could he could go do what he wants in that case. You could you could do your own thing. Every yeah. snowflake should be what. Uh, whatever. Uh, again, you don't need to worry about plot and dialogue in this. It's just hey, what it, what they decide to show. But yeah, as you saw, yeah, I got a B what... rank on that, which was mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying to remember. And, and even that, again, I got an S rank on that. Eventually, yeah. it took a lot of practice to get that right. But uh, but yeah, I think I was, yeah, it was after Idrisil that I was like, okay, let's not let's not bother trying to do S ranks anymore. If they happen, it happens. I don't need to prove anything now. Yeah. All right. Siege of Orcus. Let's do that because I need to show that fucking boss because it is glorious. Oh, I need to see it. Yeah. yeah. It like this may be a real robot story, but like, uh, but as it has shown, it like it has no problems indulging in the super robot side of the equation. It just makes me excited to see it. <laughs> yeah. Again, like, it's not just that it's a combiner, but it's a combiner where, like, the pilots are basically a Doranjo-style, like, villainous trio. Which yeah. means, you know that they are a bunch of inept goofballs. Mm-hmm. And, and they're always led by a woman who's a complete hard-ass on them. Yeah. Okay. Where are you... Are there difficulty options in this game, or is it just... I Yeah, there's, like, uh... I believe, like, there's, like, a hard mode as well as easy. Uh, like, I've... Uh, mm. But, like, I got it set to, uh, to just normal by default, since that's what I played it on. Monorail ticket. Not going mm. anywhere, clearly. No. Yeah, get to work turret. 
Alright. I think I might actually just try, like, uh, speeding through the, the level a bit more than I can instead of trying to get every piece of money and, like, hidden objective or whatever, because it's like, I've already... Because I've already cleared that stuff elsewhere. It's fine. A so does it, like... Okay, yeah, assuming things up a good point. Does it have a lady, a thin, tall guy, and a fat, short one? Uh, yeah, although I think the thin, tall guy and fat, short one is not, like, exactly the same, like, in terms of, like, the general proportions, but, uh... Mm. But yeah, the lady is the leader. Absolutely. And, but, uh, and, and, and the two of them definitely still kind of fulfill that route of just being, like, the, the lackeys. I mean, when you think about it, Team Rocket in Pokemon, it literally is, like, that series, Doranjo. Yeah. And, and, yeah, and like, and, and I would not say James is as thin as a rail. He's just damn sexy. I mean, handsome. Yeah. <laughs> he's very, he's a very handsome man. It's yeah. <laughs> and, and which means the short, stocky one obviously is Meowth. Mm-hmm. And, and, no, and, and no wonder they keep hassling that fucking kid trying to steal his mouse. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah more defense um, nice. it seems yeah, like they're doing pretty okay yeah but but there's generally nothing you can really do when it comes to like those uh those airstrikes mm. forget my luggage i want to live <laughs> i want to live <laughs> yeah but that's okay. As, the... as, since one bot, uh, since one bus still technically survived, even though the other blew up, I still cleared the secondary objective. <laughs> <laughs> it's good enough. It's good enough. I'm a mercenary. I gotta get my pay. Damn it. Yeah. <laughs> so what is the uh, the upgrade system in this game like? Uh, it's uh, like it's not really like uh, fancy. Like it, it's kind of like a uh, looks. Like, it's basically kind of arranged like it's a tech tree. Like, the money mm -hmm. you get is, like, the, what you use to, like, upgrade and, like, un and do things like, you know, increase stats, uh, unlock special abilities, like the one I currently have equipped. And, like, most importantly, it's upgrading, it's, like, unlocking entirely new weapons that you can equip. Yeah, uh, uh. both, like, both the, uh, like, the default one, like I got here, which I forgot isn't a shotgun, it's actually just a, it's just a beam rifle. And then mm -hmm. also you got like you know uh, the heavy weapons that go into like your secondary slot. So just like more things to play around with, at least. More yeah. The only thing that's like disappointing about that is that like there's nothing in the way of being able to like play as units other than this one. Hmm. Which is like. R really a uh, really a damn shame because again like the the side mode of this game lets you play as so many different uh, units besides this mm. you can even play as uh uh because i think it's called the thunderbolt like you can play as like different like uh variations or models of the, of the thunderbolt that uh that aren't even you can't even have anything like them in this uh it, like in this single player oh wow yeah, like, I'm, stuff that has, like, a lot more specialization to it. I'm surprised they don't let you play around with them in the story modes or something like that. I would not be surprised that the reason for why it's like that is because of how much, like, the cutscenes are, uh, like, hinging on, like, this particular unit and its set of animations. Yeah. Yeah, okay, that does make sense. That makes way because, more sense. Because one of the units that was uh, th the custom unit of uh, the red-headed asshole that, that thinks he's a super robot pilot, uh, that unit is unique when you play at it because it does not have the ability to hover. It just has mm. jump, and I think like when you mm. press left bumper to boost, it just goes into like a full sprint on the ground. Because mm -hmm. the idea is that it is strictly like a melee unit. It plays super mm -hmm. differently compared to this stuff. Oh, I see what you... I see, I see. Yeah, and and with some of the levels, especially the ones in, like, uh, Chapter 5, where uh, you actually are dealing with, like, you're up in the clouds and have bottomless pits, it's like, yeah. Yeah, I could see trying to play through that uh, with, like, that... Uh, with that red unit to be very difficult. Because you yeah. suddenly have to be timing your jumps now. Right. So, this is more like... Uh, we'll just have you play as the main unit because 
we designed it for, with that main unit in mind, and we want you to experience it this way, right? Exactly. Like, yeah, you could swap out weapons, but the thing with, like, handheld weapons is that, you know, like, they... Like, that's easy to work around because the weapons themselves don't have, like, any sort of, like, animations or change in, like, their perspective the same way that, like, the arms and legs do. Yeah. So that makes, uh, like, a lot more sense. But still, again, this is all the more reason why it gets back to how I wish that they would just, like, make another game like this or a 3D one. Because mm -hmm. more than anything, I want to see them try and do a game where it is... Uh, you know, like, their own Another Sentries episode. Just a bunch of different units, all with, like, their own, like, weapons and styles. That would be yeah, I'm sick. Yeah, I'm surprised they haven't done anything at this game, or... Yeah. Maybe this is it. Yeah, because it's just been... It's just been radio silence from Rocket Punch Games ever since, like, they... The last update they did. Alright, here's a good opportunity for the <laughs> ultimate attack. Yeah, yeah, this is this is a good one right here. Just fuck them all up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that'll, that'll solve the problem. But... Hell yeah. So we're just kind of lacking in good mecha indie games anyways. Yeah, it's just... Like, mecha games in the indie space is something I really just do not rate very highly because so often it feels like it's like like they they struggle to either like get like the gameplay system to like be on the level of like some of the other greats that have existed in this genre for decades prior or like mm -hmm. or I think the more damning aspect is when kind of what we talked about about what makes Rocket Punch the games like work on this so stand out is that so many of them just don't get it yeah. I forgot. Oh, gee. Oh, is this it? Oh, is it there? Yep. Oh, There's shit. the trio at last. Oh, let's go. Yeah. The, yeah, but still, you gotta you gotta work to to see that combination for just a bit longer because, as you imagine, uh, these three units can still fight on their own independently. <laughs> oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta wait until they start combining. Yeah, you, you, you gotta make them work for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they really do love uh, using like the hunting rabbits metaphor in trying to like yeah. describe this whole shit. But we'll get mm -hmm. to them soon enough. <laughs> oh yeah. Again, like, there's just so many moments uh, of this game that are just, like, they really fucking loved everything about this genre and wanted to include some things in there. Like, there's a, uh, there's a mission which, um, admittedly, I would say is, like, a nothing mission because it is ultimately just, like, a forced walking segment that ends with a cutscene. But the cutscene is so rad because it's uh, you outside of your, uh, outside of your mecha uh, coming mm -hmm. across your rival and just getting into a fist fight. Ah, and that it's rules, and, though. Yeah, and like everything okay. else in this game, it is surprisingly well animated. But then there's even other stuff after that where there's like uh, there's a mission where you're in control of like the the ship that uh, your mercenary company owns and are basically making like a like a, basically like a, a like a last ditch charge towards like the villain's stronghold, and that and you are hmm. playing as the ship in that instance. mm Hmm. Oh yeah, and there's also even the one where, um, like, like I mentioned, there's a bit the like that that non-mission where it's you're essentially like forced walking outside of your mecha. But there is another mission early on where you start outside of your mecha because the idea is that it's a stealth mission. But again, mm -hmm. like again, like the the defense escort mission stuff, it's not an instant fail if you get caught. It's just more like being stealthy contributes to uh, getting the. Uh, like the uh, uh, the secondary objectives, but yeah, it's the sort of thing where it's like you do have like on foot controls, uh, you do have like a stealth kill where you can get behind enemies and like stab them or snap their neck. I forget which one. And then there's even other mm. moments where it is like, okay, there's a there's a building you can't get into with your mecha. Uh, get out and find a and find a way to sneak in, to to open the door so you can get back into blowing things up in your robot. 
again, like they 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 figure out like some some good moments of variety, and all of it just kind of comes from ideas that would naturally come to someone if they watched a bunch of mecha anime and were like, mm -hmm. okay, what sort of stuff ha uh, has been done in these shows? And like, what can we do to make those playable? Mm. Yes, yeah, like you said, they get it. They know what makes this shit cool, and that's yeah, they're putting in their game. And it and it's like it's the sort of thing where I feel it also could have been very easy in this instance where like presentation and aesthetically like they would have like gotten it, but the but it still would have been very easy for like the gameplay to just like miss the mark in terms of like getting that feel. Yeah, because because again, like there's a lot of mecha games of uh, like that are like made by like smaller indie devs that just like fuck up on both ends or or if it's like even if they claim to be like oh yeah they've watched like mecha anime and things like that that i don't believe them that they've watched like enough to actually like oh shit i need to get out of here fuck oh yeah you should you should you need to heal you need to heal so oh do you have any health on you no oh, you don't have any recovery oh shit oh fuck uh, I'm sure it's fine. Oh, it's not I, fine. I, I, I think there's still like a checkpoint. We can we can continue yeah. from here. Yeah, this wasn't this wasn't too far actually. Yeah, yeah so you didn't even fine. look at that. Like uh, when you pause, you get like a like a like a like a vague map of the level you're in, and obviously at the end of it, once you finish going to the right, is where the boss is. Mm -hmm. So like sp speaking of like games that just kind of miss the mark, that reminds me of a game called. We'll solve this and we're back hopefully i i uh, we're back we're back i i have no idea like how that happened it didn't even give me like a pop-up saying that like obs crashed for some uh for some reason it just like closed itself automatically okay but i think but i think we're uh we OBS could we're back. now version 33 now i'm still on 29.1 don't tell me there's still more even past that. God damn it! <laughs> this this is why I'm this is why I'm gonna cease all streaming like once this uh, year the Mecha Project is done because I can't keep dealing with this shit anymore. Okay. There we go. Huh? Finally. Nice. Yeah, that's just gonna be like another VOD that's gonna need to be stitched together after this. Oh well, what are we getting at? Oh yeah, uh, mecha games that just completely fuck uh, fuck everything up. But that was like my main examples. I always think of are just always been stuff like uh, Project Nimbus. I think was kind of like the major one, one that made me realize that like I kind of don't have much hope for uh, uh, for, uh, mm. for like the uh, most like any developers to really get it because it's the sort of thing where it just felt like. Like, like more than just like uh, limited knowledge or exposure to the mecha anime, but even mecha games, which I think is the other critical thing that you kind of need. And if your only exposure or knowledge is to stuff like Zone of the Enders 2 and Armored Core 4 Answer, mm -hmm. bro, you need to play more. Because Nimbus really just felt like that, but just like, like super loose. Yeah. And then like... There's one that I know that's in uh that's still in early access after all this year all these years called Mass Builder. I'm not sure if you like if you've heard of that one, but like the main thing with that is that it's got like a uh something like it's like it's boasting that it's got like a pretty robust like customization uh system. Mm -hmm. Like being mm -hmm. able to uh like it it's but it's like it's robust in the context of it's like it's obviously just a so like a standard bipedal mecha frame. But you can like adjust very minute things about like kind of like the exterior or like the or like the length and position of the joints. But uh, it's but it's the sort of thing where like when I play it, it's like you you people really need to play virtual on because this feels like a mess as far as being like, okay, we got melee moves, but we also got shooting and it's also lock on and none of the controls like work in an intuitive way. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so it's real frustrating just kind of looking at that. And that's why, like, when I finally got around to actually giving Hardcore Mecha a chance, because initially, again, I dismissed it on the premise of, like, I prefer my Mecha games 3D instead of 2D. But then playing this after the Assault Suit series, it was like, no, no, this actually, this feels right. Like, like these are people that that have done more than, like, the bare minimum that, like, other people would, like, you know, like try to do. Like, the, the people that are the, uh... I'm gonna call them the WoW Cool Robot crowd. <laughs> you know exactly what I mean when I when I describe mm -hmm. it like that. Yeah. I just I don't know, just make a game like this. I know if you're an old like even if you're like a small indie team that can go for something ambitious. Just make something like this, something small scale yeah. too. Yeah. Or if you want to, or you still want to do three D again. Please, for the love of fucking God, play any virtual on game. <laughs> like, 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 it is the sort of thing where I feel that... I, I think, like, the concept of lock-on combat, especially when it comes to, like, ranged attacks, is something that got taken for granted very early on before we figured out that you could use the right analog stick for aiming. Because people don't really seem to realize that you can design a compelling gameplay system that's built around lock-on and projectile attacks, but... The, the important part is highlighting that, yeah, you need actual projectiles that mm. are easily readable and can be yeah. dodged and, and, uh, and all mm. this stuff. And more importantly, that you can uh, work with that to essentially, like, you know, even if your attacks are designed to fire at your opponent's last known position, based on the mm. angle that you, uh, that you are boosting towards, you can basically make it so that there is no way for them to avoid it. Like that that's that's the crux of Virtual On's gameplay, and that carries on to the likes of Gundam Extreme Versus or the Another mm -hmm. Century's episode games. Like, like uh, you are constantly changing boost direction, not because it's cool, but because like that is like the only way you're gonna be able to land your shots on like high on high movement enemies. Mm-hmm. So here we go, it's the oh. actual boss. We're fighting all three currently separate uh, yeah and then the thing's gonna happen this must have been a good surprise when he plays for the first time uh and the best part is that like they actually kind of like do a lot of hinting as to that uh being the case because there's the there was that dialogue at the start of 4-1 where Edgar was just talking about how, uh, like, just the coolness of, like, a combiner robot to, like, that pilot who's just not having any of it. And yeah, then you get to go. this. Yeah! Gatai! Oh, I'm Aquarion! Oh, yes, cool. Kimochi! <laughs> They're gonna combine? Yeah. They're gonna combine? Did, did they just combine? Oh, please. It just means there's fewer targets. <laughs> that was cool. That was worth it. Yes, I knew you'd love it. <laughs> I do like me a good combiner. Mm hmm. Okay, just the. Like, uh, uh, one of, like, the few high points of Gurren Lagan that I always think about a lot is, again, like, the first time Lagan and Gurren, like, combine into one. <laughs> like, like both the crude way it happens, where uh, where, where uh, Gurren just grabs the head and just, like, like forcibly, like, just fixes it to the to the top. Like, not in an elegant way. <laughs> but, all, but also when Liron is just, like, everyone uh, is, like, not impressed by the idea. Even yeah. though everyone knows that there's like obvious innuendo with the idea of, oh my god, they're gonna combine! Combine! Yeah! And, and he's the effeminate gay one of the group and he's nonplussed by it. Yeah, it's great. It's like, it's like moments like that where I was like, man, I definitely wish like, like the, the, like the down moments of Gurren Lagan just had like more stuff like that. Holy shit, look at that beam! Yeah! This look at that like attack! Playing like fucking you're, two dozen mines or some shit in a row. <laughs> you're fighting a super robot enemy. Not this is not a real robot enemy anymore. Yeah. 
And, and even, like, the funny thing is that a lot of these bosses you do end up fighting in the in the side mode. And, uh, mm -hmm. and, and like, some of these attacks that are, that are just happening in such quick succession don't even, like, occur there normally. Or at least, like, not as severe. Mm -hmm. like, like, mostly it's that punch where it's just leaving the trail of mines. I've never really, like, seen it, like, get to that point. Mm. But, yeah, as, as you can imagine, it's obviously just... I'm still taking a lot of damage either way due to the fact that... Oh, shit, that I'm trying to talk oh, and play oh, this at the same time! Oh, God. Oh, yeah, don't die. Don't die. You got this. You can do this. You can do this. Oh, yeah, you got it. There you go. It's all because you suck at piloting, bro! <laughs> that was close. And that's it for the cool combined robots. Yep. What a kick-ass video game. Team Rocket Plastic Alpha Cat. Yeah. Also, Lady Pink and her two cronies from Gunstar Heroes. Mm -hmm. So remember what I said, that like something bad was clearly going to happen when they introduced this kid. Oh, let's go. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, child murder! Yeah, child murder! Let's go! <laughs> this stream is going to be used as evidence against us in our trial. <laughs> if this is what I'm going to be cancelled over, then I'll go... I'll accept it. This game wants us to feel like sad over this, and we're here. We're getting hype over child murder. Yeah, it's just like pull out the paper, get a pen. Another one off the list. Another trope. <laughs> Work down the list. <laughs> and like the comic relief guy gets serious now. Yeah, he just gets broken by the whole ordeal. Yeah, and that was a C rank because, like, it probably would have been a B otherwise, but obviously, but since I had to retry from a checkpoint, that also contributes to, like, reducing your mission rank. So, yeah, uh, don't die and don't use uh, repair kits as much as you can. It's C for child murder. <laughs> when Neelix gets serious, no Voyager's gonna get real. <laughs> Boy, boy, ain't that the <laughs> truth. So I feel like we could, like, show another mission if we wanted to, but, uh... I mean, we already, like, went through three, and, uh... <laughs> I've been talking about the side mode that this game has for a while now, and naturally I feel I need to show it, because anytime yeah. I've gone back to the, this game, that has been what I have always gone to replay. Like, that mm. is the, uh... That, that, that you could say is definitely, like, the post-game. <laughs> Uh, for hardcore mecha. I'd be interested in seeing it if you want to show it off. Definitely, because uh, yeah, it's a it's a weight based survival mode. Oh, is that what it is? Huh? Yeah, and uh, you were wondering how many different types of mecha that you could play as besides the regular Thunderbolt. Uh, let's uh, let's look at the development tree. Oh my god! Oh my god! Yep. All of them? <laughs> yes. You can play as the enemy units as well as custom versions of them that, uh, as far as I'm aware, like, I'm pretty sure some of them definitely do not show up in the single player at all. I mean, look at all these different builds of, like, the Thunderbolt. Like, you don't get to have anything that's, like, quite like this in the, uh, in the main game. Like, mine's, like, equipped with, like, uh, dual spinning swords and things like that. The, that's the melee optimized build, but then there's like this specially designed heavy version. Mm. Uh, the propelling model, which is like that's basically like kind of like the standard one. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's also the unfinished version, which uh, huh. yeah. And the thing is that um, you're basically incentivized to put some amount of upgrade points into all of them because. Like, the only way to, say, unlock, like, later versions of the Thunderbolt is that you first have to, uh, put, you have to put money into upgrading one of the categories 
and you can see in the top right corner, like it'll show you the icons of other units further down the tree, as well uh -huh, as like uh -huh. the the stat that you need to upgrade in order to unlock that uh, particular version. Mm -hmm. So I could go in with like my default, which is the Thunderbolt melee optimized build, which has like some really good melee options, and I have it equipped with an energy shotgun that reload that like recharges itself very very fast. Nice, but. Uh, but we've been talking about like our rival character who eventually gets his custom unit that we never got to show it in the story. Yeah, this is the one. Oh shit! Let's go. Look at that boy. Yeah. So we're gonna go with that. Uh, and uh, going with how unique it is is that uh you cannot equip separate weapons. It has a uh. built-in cannon in its arm, and otherwise just has a bunch of melee skills. You can equip mods, though, which are, uh, because upgrading, like, th th here's the thing. I have not been able to upgrade any one of these units, like, entirely to max, where, like, all the meters are filled in yellow. Because mm -hmm. there's a point where the cost increase gets exponentially higher to the point where, like, I can't even upgrade one level on, on some of these meters by the end of it. Oh, Oh, so geez, yeah. this is where the mods come in, where it essentially gives you like the like the blue pips you see are extra boosts to those uh, to those particular uh, uh, to those particular areas. Yeah. So naturally, with this being a melee unit, why not give a bit more to uh, melee power, uh, cooldown, and HP? Because obviously, uh, mm. uh, with this being a melee unit, cooldown is still an important thing to take into consideration. With, with your mm. skills. Yeah, and there's the advanced it, melee mod, as you'd imagine. Obviously, you got to put that into uh, here. Uh, like, ammo capacity and hoverability are essentially the two things that are grayed out because, obviously, this unit does not have that capability. And, and yeah, so, yeah, so there's visible peoples are weird, but they kind of yeah. like this more than... Yeah, yeah, Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, it's just it's like it's just a one of a kind looking unit compared to everything that we've got on this list. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a uh, you can also sell mods and weapons that you get because like basically uh when you go through the game like you get uh you'll get random drops of for like different weapons. I basically got it at this point where like any of like the purple rarity weapons I save and everything else I recycle immediately. But yeah, mm -hmm. but you can see there's a whole bunch of different weapons as well that, uh, again, are way more varied than what you have to use as the Thunderbolt in the story mode. Like, this is the shotgun I have, as you can see. Mm -hmm. It's really powerful. Stuff like experimental beam cannon, special grenade launchers, uh, like a special shotgun that looks like it came out of Mass Effect. Yeah. That's, that's a Mass Effect shotgun. Yeah, it, it, it's that signature curve along the front of the barrel that is so distinct. Yeah. Beam cannons, rocket launchers, all kinds of stuff. Of course, we're not going to be using any of that because we're going in with our fists. Yeah. So, and, and here's the thing with the, with the wave, uh, with this wave-based mode, is that uh, you essentially go through like 50 waves before... Uh, the enemy patterns start to recycle, but the idea is mm. that, like, on each cycle, they get harder and harder. Mm. Uh, as you can see, that number, 374, uh, that's yeah. the farthest I've gotten, and that's with that uh. particular unit. I could continue from uh, the last checkpoint, which would have been at uh, wave after wave 350, but that would be way too hard. So we're going to re-challenge all the way from the beginning at the first wave. So, I think yes. You could, if you want, you could play this for, like, hundreds upon hundreds of waves. I've had shit where it's, like, it feels like it basically approaches an hour of playtime, uh, like, each session. Look at that! Oh, uh, yeah! Yeah, 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 yeah! Yeah, 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 yeah! Oh, my God, look at the speed out of that boy! Oh, Let's go yeah! fire! Yeah! Look at the punchy! Oh, you just, you just, oh, oh yeah, that's right. I have to magic. Boshiroku, beam! Oh, this is just, this is just a stupid robot. This, this is, is just Mazinger, <laughs> who's yeah. piloted by an asshole. Yeah, it's evil Mazinger. So, Tetsuya? 
Nah, I Tetsuya guess. at least had a reason no. for being kind of a shithead. Yeah. He, he was basic. He was basically Asuka before Asuka came along to become like the poster child for hot blooded pilot with like insecurity issues. Because mm. that's effectively yeah. what it was. It is. It is he, absolutely. He, he wanted Kenzo to see him as his son and not Koji. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's like no dumbass that is immature, and because of that, your your foster father's dead. Mm. Rip Kenzo, that magnificent Rip mustache. Kenzo. Mm-hmm. Great, now I got the great Mazinger theme stuck in my head again. Dash, dash, dun, 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 dash, it's dash. A, dash, dun, dun. It's a good theme. It's really it's, good. It's so good, and it took me so long to realize after all this time that, like, Impact's theme from Mystical Ninja Star Goemon is very much yep. a send-up to Orewa Great Mazinger. Yeah. It even I ends had... the same way. It has mm -hmm. the chorus where there's like the backing vocals from children, because mm -hmm. because obviously uh, Mazinger is a hero beloved by all ages. And and even, and even the whole da da dash is just all dun uh, dun dun da dun. Yeah, it it's also sung by the same singer. Yeah, God. Rip. Not even uh, uh, like over legend. a year's gone by, and I still miss the King of Any song. Yeah, I've I've been listening to uh, to him again, and it's like, yeah, this man's got he's still got bangers. He's got a fucking vocal range, and I miss him already. Yeah, at, at, at least at least Jam Project is continuing on, like to to keep his legacy. Mm hmm. Yeah, because because that's how it started. He was the he was the original founder because he yeah. wanted to fucking bring back some like fire to anime opening opening themes like just anime <laughs> music in general and he was sure right to do did. so yeah god i just love this punchy boy look at yeah. him go yeah oh. that said though it is very difficult to avoid damage when you're doing this naturally yeah because because guy gets up so close to everybody yeah, like, it, it is still ultimately, like, a, a gameplay system where, like, it clearly puts more value on, uh, uh, like, on ranged attacks and, like, having to mm -hmm. manually aim. Yeah. But this is a fun unit to play as if you just want to, like, blow off some steam. Yeah. Sometimes that's all it, is that's all you want. So yeah, is it just this one map? Uh, no. Like, after every 50 waves, it cycles over to a new map. So, oh, so, gotcha. so there's, like, quite a few variety that are, like, based on locations uh, seen in the in the story mode. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think at this point, if, like, if I want to keep it safe, I definitely just gotta, like, make more use of my photonic beam. Mm-hmm. But why do that when you just get up in their face and punch them? You're right. I mean, I got. I mean, I got the super low, uh, like melee cooldown. Might as well. Yeah. That that's it though as well. Like obviously, just there, there's not enough time to show all the cool stuff that there is like in this game. Because if there was, I'd keep doing the story mode just to show like one of the actual boss fights against uh, uh, against this unit because it is. Is pretty great. Like it, it is another reprise of like that music you heard when we fought this dude in like his uh, standard red colored mech. Mm -hmm. Like, like that's pretty great. Nice. Well, maybe you people at home should play this for yourself. Get the yeah. money. It's on Steam. It's a modern game. Like you don't have to jump through the same number of hoops that like I obviously would like tell you to if I were to recommend any of the other games we played on this series. Yeah. Like, what do you mean you still don't have a PS2 and you haven't modded it to play import games? <laughs> yeah. You can spot this on Steam and there will probably be a sale for it soon. Yeah. Lord Gaben's got you covered. <laughs> I'm probably going to buy this on the sale. Yeah, you definitely should. There you go. It's, it's such a good game. Mm hmm. Uh, oh yeah, you can charge the rocket punch. Yeah, that's 
<laughs> That's the shit right there. Mm-hmm. I want I want to see what they do like with a um a more super robot focused game if they were ever to try one. Yeah. I imagine it would have to be like uh like if they were to go the 2D route it would definitely have to like channel a lot more beat em up influences I think to really work. Yeah. But it, but it does also highlight as well just the uh it's it's because like this is the thing that I've been thinking about again mostly because of the uh a UFO robot Grendizer game that came out last month. Yeah. And how it's like, it really is a huge conundrum trying to figure out how do you make an actual for real super robot game? Because mm -hmm. the way super robots work in general is that they are larger in life figures that don't really adhere to a strict set of rules and as far as how they're used. Yeah. But, uh, and, and the reason why like you often see like real robot game systems be the primary thing in, uh, in video games is because real robots by their design have to abide by rules and by yeah. that and uh, as a coincidence so do games games need mm -hmm. rules in order to function so like mm -hmm. i so like i feel like the only way to like make a super robot game ultimately work is that you'd have to essentially take like a real robot game system amplify a lot of elements and then place yeah. like the super robot aesthetic on top of it yeah like, like, I don't think you could ultimately, like, ever make a game that, uh, like, properly captures, like, the insane level of escalation that you have by the end of Gurren Lagann, where, like, you're throwing yeah. galaxies, like, like, like throwing stars. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, you could still make something works be uh, work with that in the context of, like, a, of, like, a solid dash system and, like, a mix of, like, melee and range combat that work in the lock-on uh, combat system. Mm -hmm. You know, like, another Sentry's episode. Yeah. Because as much as it started with real robots, uh, the fact that games later on started to incorporate, like, super robots into the mix, I'm like, that system clearly does, like, that is, like, the best uh, test case for, like, a super robot action game. Yeah. And all the more reason why I keep going on about, like, like not just with, like, virtual on, like, because I always bring that up since that's, like, like, the most, uh, like, that is, that is the Mazinger Z of mecha games, if we're going to put it simply. Like, it is the mm -hmm. game where, like, all these others generally would not be able to exist without it. Yeah. But another Century's episode, I'd say, is up there. It is the one that, like, definitely needs it. Because I get, obviously, everyone has love for Zone of the Enders. But there have been so many other games from Japan that have, like, carried on that style of, like, yeah. free-flying, fast-paced robot action. And expanded mm. the functionality even more. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Got it. It's funny you mentioned that. No, uh, I, I, th I think once I get to, like, uh, once I finish, like, the boss of this wave, I'm actually going to, like, uh, drop out of here just because, like, the last thing I want to show is, uh, like, my preferred unit and just show kind of how powerful it is or or more specifically show what it, what it looks like as an actual challenge when, uh, mm -hmm. when it's going up against... Uh, Units that are scaled up in difficulty to match wave 350. Mm hmm. I think that's fair. Yeah, yeah. let's go see what. But first, I gotta recycle some shit. Oh boy, yeah. <laughs> this is, this is like the biggest downside I'm going to say about the, uh, about this mode is the results screen. Because, mm. like, listen, if you've done sessions like I have where you start from round one and go all the way to 350 plus, there's a lot of, like, boxes that you pick up that you have to open individually. Ugh. Because they really did not expect the idea that someone would possibly routinely want to play through 300 plus rounds of this shit in a row. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Borealis special? I guess. I mean, it's a blue-colored mecha. Blue and white and gray. That That's generally my go-to color scheme. <laughs> The uh, the glowy bits I, I would generally have them be more like lightish red, but that but whatever that's a minor detail. But yeah, as you can see, there's my beam shotgun, my mods. Mm -hmm. There's so much to the uh, and, and I guess just to show like yeah, I can't really upgrade any of these uh right now because I only have 30k, and some of these are like. Ammo capacity and range power and HP are the only ones I've gotten to max thus far. But melee power? Like, 
Motherfucker, at this point, you're, like, having to cough up, like, a million plus in credits. The the, the money scale on, on these upgrades gets ludicrous. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you mentioned that. So we're gonna deploy... Gonna use continue, which uh, drops us off at... Uh, after uh, wave 350. I do kind of wish that the game would, like, give you the option of choosing from any of the checkpoints. Mm. But, I don't know. I guess all the more reason why I wish these guys could, like, make a follow-up to this. Because then they could also do a more refined version of the simulation mode. Because it's like... Yeah. I... I want to say this wasn't even, like, in the game originally at launch. Like, I think it used to just oh. be the, uh, uh, like, just the story mode. Hmm. But anyway, like here's the melee optimized build. Oh, that's cool. That little spitty thing is cool as hell. Yep. And this shotgun's pretty good. Unfortunately, I take a lot of damage from a single hit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you're kind of a glass cannon. Yeah. But obviously, if I were to start at the very beginning, then it would be like, oh, this is, uh, oh, this is so OP. Like, it's a good mm -hmm. way to build off steam. Like, that's the reason, more than anything, I tend to start at the beginning. Because pretty much at the end of, like, every five waves, I think it is, it's like you're guaranteed to get a, uh, a health restore kit. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. uh, and, when, and when you have an overpowered unit at the start, just blasting through the first hundred waves, you pick up a lot of those. So by right. this point... You would generally have like I don't know maybe fifty. Oof. Yeah. Yeah, you'd have you have like a whole bunch of health restore kids by now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not not many sim points and not many uh and like no upgrades to get from that either. So uh. Mm -hmm. That's hardcore mecha. There's also a multiplayer mode, but we're not playing that because we don't do multiplayer games on this server uh, on on this stream. <laughs> Like, like I, I do, I do not want to like complicate matters further as far as like trying to run a game online while also streaming at the same time. I think I live. it's fair. Now to wait for the adverts to stop. Yeah, unfortunately, oh, that's no. kind of like the. Unfortunately, that's uh, we're at the end of things, uh, Selnar. But, but whatever, it's not too bad. You only missed one OBS crash. We seem to recover pretty fine, all things considered. Yeah, could have been worse. Yeah. Man, it's like, this game, I, th I think, like, if, if there was never going to be a sequel for it, then at the very least, I would wish that these would get, like, uh, like a bonus representation in the Super Robot Wars game. They yeah. already got the proportions for it. They, they already do. got this theme song by Hironobu Kageyama. Like, this, I think, is, like, the real end goal. Like, we obviously talk about, like, whether, like, if someone like, is creating, like, a work of mecha fiction, game, like, mm -hmm. animation or otherwise, and whether or not they get it or not. And I think the mm -hmm. matter of if they get it or not is vindicated when you get to have this moment where you have like a legend uh, like in Japan Legi that, you know, has a big association with this genre. It it's like with Pacific Rim where uh, yeah. like I was telling you about how uh, like about like the ending of Shin Mazinger Zero versus the Great General of Darkness. And like yeah. that's the one where it's like it's calling upon like basically the spirits of all other like mecha anime icons and they also include gypsy danger huh. because uh because if you remember back then uh when uh, pacific rim came out it got a glowing endorsement from hideo kojima saying that it was every japanese citizen's duty to watch this movie plus, <laughs> yeah. Yo plus yoji shinkawa did like a theatrical poster for it that was pretty rad but yeah. more than that was that before or after Pacific Rim 2? It was definitely before. I do recall, Wait. because it was going on in, like, the early 2010s. Like, I think it was happening, Wait. like, the year or two after that movie came out. But also, uh, since we're talking about Shin Mazinger Zero, Go Nagai, creator of the Super Robot, gave it his endorsement. That's how you know how you fucking made it in this world. Yeah, you made something that everybody's like, yeah, this is a Super Robot. This is a rope. This is a yeah. mecha show. This is a mecha anime. Yeah, they like this is a Hollywood movie made for us. Thank you, Guillermo del Toro. Yeah, when uh, the it's guy unfortunate. Says go. Unfortunately, I don't know what you're talking about, Sumi. What Pacific Rim Two? I don't think they ever made a sequel. It never happened, right? Yeah, I think it only lasted in the concept phase or something. 
Yeah. I don't know. Pacific Rift, that's another thing that's ripe for Super Robot Wars representation. Like, if they're going fucking wild yeah. lately by having Magic Knight, Rayearth, and Sakura Wars in there, like, yeah. why not? Just go for it. Just put in, just put in yeah. Pacific Rim. I'm sure Gale of the Toro would be like, hell yes. Yeah. I mean, I would like if, if, if BB Studio would... Oh, I don't know. Uh, fucking give Get a Robo Armageddon a break already, and use something else. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, like I love Shin Get a Robo, but you know that there's the entire manga saga that you could like recreate. You have Get a Robo Arc, the anime, which came out two years ago. It's just, you got that now. Yeah. I, a part of my, a part of me does wonder. Oh, are you, are you just using Shin Getter because? Because uh, they just, original. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, mainly because they don't know like where else to take like, uh, uh, like stories for Get a Robo uh, since it's been so long since Ishikawa passed away, or maybe, yeah. or maybe again, it's probably just as simple as not everyone just likes that version of Shin Get a Robo. Well, I was also thinking that I, I think uh, Ryoma's original voice actor from that like. Uh, original tv show i think he's retired now maybe oh i mean even I no then idea. yeah i mean even then i don't think they really like i forget i don't think they used his voice actor in get a robo arc i think they were still using like a lot of the voice actors that were established from armageddon onward i think so yeah yeah because because i because Jin is still the same voice he has always been since armageddon yeah yeah i, I don't know also, i can also use new get a robo Yes, new Get a Robo deserves more. Also, Macross deserves to come back. God damn it! Like one so, day, like, we are already in the pre-production for like a new Macross series, and Delta has completely skipped out on any Super Robot Wars representation. This is a crime. One day, one day he'll come back. I, one day, I believe. one day, Super Robot Wars will be blessed with the culture again. But <laughs> I don't know. At some point, I just keep wishing for. Uh, Macross leaves from the shackles of Harmony Gold, you mean? Like, honestly, at this yeah. point, like, I, I I don't care if it's, like, if if Super Robot Wars has to go back to only being released in Southeast Asian territories, I'll take it. Just give me, uh, just give me Walkure in, like, in Super Robot Wars, damn it, I need it! <laughs> and maybe, and maybe like uh, give a happier ending for Freya we on this time. I don't know. You guys have already done it for Musashi and and Kamina and like Guy Daigoji in the past. Was that a spoiler? I think it was. Ah, shit. Whatever. Everyone, everyone, fucking watch Macross Delta. That's all I have to say. Stream's over. Next week is Damon X Machina. Kaboom Dragoon's gonna be on it for the penultimate episode. Take care, everyone. Goodbye, everyone. Game over.